Is, is the government watching you, Bob? I didn't think they were after 30 years, but, um, you know, due to recent events, I would probably change. What happened? <laughs> Jeremy and I had a private conversation out in a remote area of my property. Uh, cell phones in our pockets, but turned off. All filmed. And filming it. And um, Jeremy was down there to film some of this documentary. He left the following morning. And simultaneously, there was an FBI raid at my place. A raid? Business. Yeah. Looking for what? Well, they said they were looking for a, some receipts from uh, an individual that might have bought some toxic material from a company. But they came with more people than you could really think would even fit in our building. I mean, agency after agency, um, you know, computer experts pulling information off the computers and- What do you think they were there for? Well, what do you think, Jeremy? They, they, they were able to repeat back verbatim a portion of the conversation that we thought was private. And that shocked us because we were joking that nobody even cared 30 years later what he says. But apparently, it's not as it appears. There were 25, 27 forensic agents with a truck there for paperwork. I don't know. We don't really care. We just know now that our conversations are not private. Well, what, FBI, what about this is a crime? They're looking for some of the fuel from the craft that might have been stolen. Element 115 was always something Bob said fueled the craft, a stable version. And to be direct, which Bob is being direct right now, they were looking to see if he had any of that taken out of Los Alamos where they machined it, which he did say back in 1989 or so that he did get some out to do tests on. Never miss a beat. Subscribe, Subscribe to Larry King now and watch new episodes every day. Well, there you have it. Jeremy Corbell. So. Bob Lazar, he built a hydrogen car. Lithium hydrogen storage tanks from a cyclotron in his yard. Oh, Bob Lazar became a UFO rock star with a newsy in his glove box when he parked outside that bar. Dynamite, he's got chemicals all night. At unitednuclear.com, you can order it right on site. Oh, need some thallium? Do you wanna kill someone? Old Bob will connect you, and then the FBI detects you. You can run and tell Corbell it was the 115. Yeah, that foolish man will believe most anything. And even though he's got disclosure with that 115, well, he just sits on it and he doesn't do a thing. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Hey. Why the hell? He's sitting on 115, element 115, and he's got a piece of this that he smuggled out of Los Alamos in, in uh, you know, 1989. Um, uh, <sighs> What happened to that? I'm, I'm serious, guys. Um, <laughs> so let, let's dig into this a, a little bit deeper. And uh, good to start, start the show off with, uh, with a little, um, you know, clip. I, I got a couple clips to play. Um, this one's uh, one of my favorite Bob Lazar clips. We'll, we'll start off with uh, right here. No, they just asked him the year of his graduation from MIT. What was the year of graduation? Probably, probably eighty-two, because I think I left there. Went to Los Alamos. I have friends who went to MIT. I was accepted there myself, couldn't afford to go out of high school, and. Uh, Nobody who gets a master's degree in physics from MIT doesn't know what year he got it in. He was asked to name some of his professors. Well, let's see now. Uh, he named somebody, Bill, somebody, I won't use his name on the year. Uh, Doxler. It was not a common name, fortunately. He was a physicist. 
Uh, yeah, so Stanton Friedman proved that um, Bob Lazar's, you know, so Bob Lazar was an MK Ultra patient. Did, did the MK Ultra doctors, um, you know, did the MK Ultra doctors, uh, you know, convince him that he went to these schools too? That's, you know, my next question. Um, you know, this, this is the whole thing. Is the UFO world can be a, a fascinating scientific anomaly with profound sociological implications. I would be ashamed of being human if I didn't try to find out, or at the minimum, acknowledge the things. This is a tribute to uh, shout out is the to Justin Michaels. Archetype of this. He is a serious researcher with a computer science, physics, and astronomy background. He even helped build the earliest version of the internet, a project called ARPANET, with legendary computer scientist Doug Engelbart. And for the purposes of this episode, he has probably talked to more UFO witnesses and seen more exotic material than any living person. In fact, it's now almost conventional knowledge that if you're an average citizen who encounters a UFO crash, mail the materials to Jacques. Jacques books are incredibly dense and detailed, not for the faint of heart. But if you read them closely, Jacques can drop some truth bombs you won't get anywhere else, like in his book Revelations, Alien Contact and Human Deception, when he hints that Bob Lazar was actually an MK Ultra patient, possibly the subject of government brainwashing, which led him to believe he worked on reverse engineering UFOs. On page nine. Wow. So the MK Ultra program made him believe that, you know, he his professor Duxler at uh, Pierce Junior College in Woodland Hills, California, where he lived next to a rocket scientist named Eugene Gluhareff, who taught him all how to build the rocket bikes and his rocket cars that he'd later bring to Los Alamos, drive around Los Alamos. Yeah, so this uh, MK Ultra program convinced him that Bill Duxler, who's his uh, you know electronics and physics professor from um, you know, Pierce Junior College was uh, so, was really his Caltech professor, and that he had gotten a Caltech degree, and that um, Bill Duxler, uh, no, the other guy. So the other guy was a uh, Hossenfelder, which was was his high school teacher. At um, we we tracked that down. So where's uh, be able to find this on Twitter, I believe. Let me see if I can't find it on uh, on the. On the Twitter verse here, let's go and search for um, Hassan Felder Lazar. Nope, it won't find it. It's probably cut that thread. That's interesting. Um, but anyways, I have the um, I have the uh, pictures somewhere. I have them on BobLazar.com, and I know that they were out on a number of places um, of his high school teacher. But somehow MK Ultra convinced him that his high school teacher was, you know, I don't get it, guys. So anyone want to want to jump on and uh, and join the uh, the discussion here on Bob? I'd love to hear a shout outs from the, the audience, but um, guys, the other thing is, right, we have info on some of the, the real kind of Bob Lazars, the real kind of people that they recruit into, um, you know, top secret programs. And we know some of that information um, about some real um, confirmed cases. The Bob Lazars case has never really been confirmed. Jeremy Corbell is allegedly sitting on this uh, element 115, but he, you know he can't bring it forward. Um, and we're just looking at that Bob Lazar case as you know what the what the heck is going on. So we can kind of compare it against some actual known cases of um, people like like Bob Lazar claims to be. You know, and is he in a you know? So let's look at some cases of MK Ultra cases. So MK Ultra is a big um, project. Um, it spanned um, 168 sub projects in total um, over its uh, night. Well, it started in 1953 and was halted 20 years later. So, 20 year history um, of, you know, 
LSD, psychoactive drugs, sensory deprivation, isolation, verbal sexual abuse, um, and other forms of torture. Um, MKUltra did a lot to silence researchers like um, Bob Lazar and Michael Riconciuto. I haven't heard of Michael Riconciuto. Um, Bob Lazar is not a, really a researcher. I, does he really do research? I thought he's like a United Nuclear dealer. That's kind of... Uh, and um, Bobcat, please explain more. I'd like to, to you to share more about... Um, what did MK Ultra do in in specific, and where can where where can we find the MK Ultra documents um, for that specific uh, genre? I know we can find a lot of these uh, MK Ultra documents on you know sites like Black Vault or other uh, FOIA request um, sites that 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 host and sponsor these types of declassified um, documents and information. And you can even the CIA reading room. I think you can. We'll get a lot of the documentation on, on MKUltra, the declassified documents, and read up on it uh, straight from the uh, documents themselves. Um, oh, oh, are you in the grocery store, Bernard? Yeah, so um, MKUltra program is a very interesting project. There's a number of psychiatrists that work for MKUltra. They did uh, a, a number of... Um, brainwashing techniques, sleeper agents, uh, uh, um, different uh, techniques for um, intelligence uh, manipulation and, and also um, even hypnosis and, uh, and, dr and, and experimentation with drugs and, and truth serums. And, and that type of uh, was big during the 60s. You know, it was like the, a, a big subject in a lot of these uh, films about spies and spy work with, with these truth serums and um, this was all real stuff that was going on under MK Ultra. Uh, also, you know, frequencies, uh, just like Project Rainbow, um, we get into real cases of, um, you know, Project Rainbow. We we had a a, a, PA, a PhD named um, Edward Mills Purcell, um, and Purcell Edward Mills. So Purcell uh, won the Nobel Prize in physics for nuclear magnetic resonance um, for his discovery that he published in 1946. So um, that was a huge discovery um, for when they tapped into nuclear magnetic resonance and figured out that they could talk to spin-aligned nuclei and um, do that in their laboratory. Um, that was a big, big thing. So that they um, wanted to test that on all magnetic resonance and, and spin magnetic resonance of all, and map out all of uh, the whole periodic table and also get the, the full, um, you know, spectral, uh, you know, understanding of the, the whole electromagnetic spectrum, really map out the whole electromagnetic spectrum because, um, you know, a decade before, of course, the horn antenna, at a Lyman Laboratory of Physics at Harvard University um, was the first to detect uh, radio radiation from nuclear atomic hydrogen gas in the Milky Way at a wavelength uh, now. Um, so this is dedicated to him there. But um, the whole discovery of the electromagnetic bat microwave background radiation when they built those horns to look in the microwave you know, spectrum and listen in on that and um, they, uh, when they started listening on the microwave spectrum, they realized that, wow, there's all this background radiation and background noise hanging around. So um, led to a lot of interesting discoveries in physics. Uh, but these, this is the type of guys that, that uh, get recruited. Usually it's, uh, you know, um, it's the kind of people that um, Galileo Project is actually hiring for now. They, they, want, they want people that have PhDs with a, a real strong um, – curriculum vitae behind them to join the fray. Um, another guy uh, people need to look an eye on is, uh, you know, Feynman. Richard Feynman was recruited out of MIT at age 18 to work on the Manhattan Project and um, is undeniably, you know, one of the greatest physicists of all time and um, worked on a variety of different classified programs over the years, some of which we're still finding out about believe it or not. 
Um, and interesting enough, um, the the OSAP program, which talks about you know a lot of these advanced materials, which you know none of which are shown in Jesse you know Jesse Michaels's intro. He shows all these alien materials, and you know, but he, they really don't get into that that stuff um, like we we try to get into it on on this channel as far as the uh, the different types of materials and, and and material science that exists. Um, on the cutting edge and, and our, how we have to understand how alien materials might work um, through photonics and spintronics. Um, but yeah, it's, it's guys like, you'd have to look up, you know, where, where are some of the people who's getting, so some of the hot topics. So if you want to find stuff, this is some of the time, every once in a while I'll do a search like this and I find a, a whole bunch of fruitful leads as you find out these, these are the hot topics, right? And you, and you, then you search the, the recent PhD literature at all the top universities for who's publishing literature, uh, you know, who's publishing PhDs on this type of material or related materials, you know? Um, and that's how you'll find, you know, if you're looking for things that are, are related to this, like um, for example, super cavitation, right? You would have found guys like Sal Pays, you know, that realize, oh, this guy Sal Pays wrote his PhD on, on you know, super cavitating bubbles. And, uh, you know, then Sal Pays later appears, you know, in these DARPA contracts uh, and these Navy um, patents, um, you know, which blew up. So, you know, guy, guys like this with the secret, yeah, the secret sauce. You got them. This is this is how we find the, the the these you know Bob Lazar types. Um, now Bob Lazar does Bob Lazar fit in with a lot of these other guys? Is the background the, the, the education thing is the, the big hang up? It was for Stanton Friedman and it is for you know a lot of people who who especially it's a big hang up for me on this uh, um, Jesse Michaels you know trying to skeet away with this idea that you know bob lazar was just uh you know in the mysticism beliefs and, and and that right afterward that you know oh that we can just skeet away with the the explanation that bob lazar might have was just mk ultra maybe uh you know but it's just doesn't fit with the uh the rest of the story um i don't think and I'd love to get, you know, Bob and, and, and Gene Huff on specifically because I don't think that, you know, Jeremy Corbell has done justice to, to uh, the story and his uh, documentary uh, and retelling of, of the case. In fact, uh, John Lear was a big part of that story. Um, I'd like to show the uh, – this – this video is one of my favorite on Bob Lazar. And uh, my pilot was flying, flying at night, I believe, over the uh, Arizona desert and saw one too. So you started, you got an interest because of the other members of your family. How did you start out? I had their uh, top uh, uh, group of uh, military and scientists. And uh, I do know that when the president becomes president, it takes at least three or four months before he is actually gets the clearance to know everything there is and that doesn't so this is um interesting about the uh yeah bob lazar um <clears throat> he's just uh, lots of things in the story that doesn't fit man um but yeah the dude built jet cars so it's interesting that um the engine a jet car doesn't equal element 115 it's actually not a, – it's actually a pressure – a Gluharef pressure jet engine, right? And he didn't build it, right? All he did was really uh, mount it or attach it to his car or bike. Um, this guy, um, Eugene Gluharef, who was, was his actually um, – Eugene Michael Gluharef was actually his neighbor in, in uh, Woodland Hills, California. So um, – yeah, hey, and um, Jeremy, there actually is a uh, uh, point where the MK Ultra stuff meets the Bob Lazar story. 
uh, where he talked about uh, when he was uh, cornered about, uh, I think, uh, divulging some information. And he said that he was made to drink a cup of what looked like water, but smelled like pine. And uh, he said that it uh, caused him to like, um, there's one moment where like, uh, where the guards were like hitting him with the butt of his gun, with the butt of their gun after he drank the liquid. Yeah, and then he, said that was... he, wouldn't, he wouldn't come back to work there because he said that he would remember going to the airplane and then from the airplane throughout the rest of the day, he couldn't remember anything. And then he'd remember getting back on the airplane and going home and that's it. And it scared him. That was, that was what he, he had to say. Huh? I wonder what the heck it was. Maybe like, <laughs> or like what can make you like not be able to still be able to work, but not remember anything. Scopal. I mean, um, that could be, that could be part of it. Um, there, and there are a lot of cases of uh, people using that on the street in Brazil where they'll they'll put like uh, some in their hand and they'll blow it in someone's face and then force yeah. them to empty their bank account. Yeah. And they won't seem high or anything. So It's a weird trip. Yeah, I, I've heard of that. The scopolamine poison. Super is poison. dangerous, though, because the but, dosage is very difficult to control, especially if you're just like blowing it in someone's face. So a lot of them just die. It's fucking Yeah. Hard. Yeah, I mean, I mean Sorry. that means if you're blowing it in someone's face, then that means that only a tiny little bit is really being absorbed, like maybe a, a little bit up their nose or through their eyes, probably not through their skin, uh, depending on how long it sits. So it's yeah, it's probably active in the microgram range. Yeah, if you go watch this old video of John Lear uh, being interviewed with George Knapp on the record, he talks about this hangar out there in the desert that, uh, in this facility, he talks a lot about area 51 and also this facility where there's a, you know, a, allegedly 11, um, alien discs. Bob said it was nine, but in, in this interview, um, he says it's 11, uh, discs out there in the desert. Um, right an old George Knapp. Really cool that, uh, in fact, so so yeah, and go check that out. That's a cool thing to go back and, and look up. Um, Gary Nolan um, and uh, Avi Loeb, right? We're on uh, Brian Keaton today. Anyone watch that? Can tune in. Did anybody watch this? No. Nope. So I uh, I watched the I watched no I watched pretty much all of it. There's a couple parts I had to like uh, put it down uh, and step away, but um, I got pretty much most of it. Um, Avi has admitted that he's aware of uh, laser induced plasma effect. So there's a couple like de uh, important developments, um, good good things that that they've been getting the the data at least looking at it so that they at least are aware of a lot of the, um, the data and stuff. Um, I thought that this was awesome. Um, they didn't ask too many deep questions. You know, I didn't get a lot of my questions asked. I really got to dig in with Gary deeper. Um, you know, I have a lot of questions for, for um, more questions about metamaterials and invisibility cloaks and, and that kind of stuff for, for uh, Avi. Um, so I just, um, I, that's basically, my, my, I, I would be, it would be a deep uh, dive sensor talk and I'd get some of our top guys on, on the sensor side of things to really ask him some deep questions about the telescopes and the, and the sensors that he's using. If we, if we could get Abby on, if, um, and if we could get uh, Gary Nolan on, um, Gary Nolan actually has responded to me and, and said that, you know, he, he's expressed interest in coming on the show. It's just that he's been super busy. So I would, that would be great if we could get Gary on the show. Um, I hope I didn't turn him off with some of the questions that I'd said I could have, I would ask him about like the CIA and his, you know, past history with the CIA. Cause um, that's going to come up, man. I mean, come on. Like everyone's curious about like how you, it's how you got into this, that, that, that you weren't even believing in this stuff, according to you. And that, you know, when the CIA approached him um, and sh started showing him all this data, um, 
a lot of classified stuff is when he became um, convinced and then now he can't, you know, use that classified data um, and publish papers on it, but he can try to collect his own or, you know, consult with people like Abby or trying to collect their own um, and what and whatnot. But um, I don't think that he's he's given any super deep insights scientifically, at least not of the type that I've gotten from a lot of other um, sources. So anyways, we'll, we'll see and hear him out. Um, he, he's got certainly got access to stuff. He's, he said he, he admitted on the show that he has access to those uh, meta materials that Tom DeLong had, right? So, so that bismuth magnesium meta material that came up on the show, and he said he's yeah yeah I have a piece of that. And I was like, in all caps, I'm like, dude, have you sent it to a terahertz lab and had it? you know, blasted with terahertz. You know, Tom DeLong on Joe Rogan said that that meta that that you know, piece of uh, metal, if you shoot it with terahertz, that it floats. So have you done the experiment yet, you know? <laughs> and the answer is, you know, the, he didn't get the the question asked. So so now I got to hit Gary up um, privately and, and try to get that question asked. Um, that is, uh, that is actually, I'm going to, I'm going to send Gary a, uh, a message right now. Yeah, I'm going to send him a message right now. Um, you got to take that meta material piece um, to a terahertz lab. Um, and run this experiment. Totally gonna, totally gonna do it. Uh, no, sorry. There's a question by Doctor Hongo if Jeremiah's hover coil is fake, and no, no, it is not. Uh, the inventor is Gerald, and we will be doing an episode on it together. Myself, Gerald, and um, Jeremiah and Charlie C this weekend. MK Ultra. Oh, this guy. I feel like the predecessors to MK Ultra don't get enough attention, though. Uh, specifically, yeah. Artichoke and Bluebird. Well, I want to say that um, a lot of the history of like crazy mental hospitals is in this area where I'm from. Um, there's so much history of these these types of uh, facilities. There's a whole video called uh, the Titty Cut Follies, okay? And I was told about this through. Um, I used to date I date a woman that was worked in uh, in um, these types of places and stuff, and she she did a lot of in interesting research on the history, especially of it around here. But this is a uh, a documentation of you know some of these experiments and, and some of these victims and, and our, our patients and stuff. It's, it's really quite sad and, and, and messed up to hear some of this. And it's, it's really shocking, you know, as a, it was filmed here in Massachusetts actually. And, um, you know, there's a, not, there's a whole bunch of places around here that, that go back, including Lizzie Borden was put at this one place in Taunton. Uh, state hospital uh, there's a number of state there was foxborough state hospital too i remember that used to be a haunted house uh, they used to have a haunted it was shut down when i was a child and i had a haunted house there foxborough state hospital i mean doesn't it go back to uh, uh, Ma salem massachusetts massachusetts with the uh, like the salem witch trials i mean they're already yeah. Yeah, but this is what they were doing back then in the in the in eighteen hundreds. If this place was like had let, it used to be a haunted house there, but there was all legends that it was haunted, you know. And now it's apartment buildings. They rehabbed all the old brick, you know, and built apartments in here. But this is like what it used to look like. Um, if they only knew something about energy, like the cosmic background radiation, they would understand that some 
you know, uh, uh, elements of hu humanity could leave a memory trace in. Oh the God, city. there's still chains on the walls in this place from where the people were chained up in, in, in these rooms and in these cells and stuff. And, and they literally would take the bums off the street, you know, alcoholics and other stuff, uh, other people, and they would lock them up in, in the, in these institutions and, you know, say that they were insane. And, um, you know, th this was, uh, like a routine thing they would they would I'm, like it's in the, it's in that region's uh um like descendants you know like like they all have the genetic of uh let's call it like believing in the supernatural of somehow you know even to accuse somebody of insanity i mean you know you can't insanity is a perspective like some geniuses were considered insane you know because people didn't understand their topic line so they deemed them crazy you well, the it. line between the two is very thin. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, true. You know, but I, I believe, like in Massachusetts, that you know they have older history than just that of, you know, I don't know, weird mental things. You know? Yeah. Well, Lizzie Borden, you know, that's like the, the shock the whole nation of females don't usually commit murder, um, but she killed her parents. You know, I'm like. And very violently with an axe and <laughs> 40, 40 wounds. A lot of people are uh, crazy in our society because they've gone along with their psychiatrists and said uh, okay to kind of all kinds of medications. So I know that in, in my hometown there were, there were a lot of people that were like that. Um, I, I think a lot of people create a lot of stories to get what they want. But I'm just finding out a whole bunch of history about some of these schools and, and facilities here in Rhode Island um, discovered recently. Um, I didn't know this, but um, now we're going totally off tangent here. Uh, yeah, so I was going to ask you, how does that help our, like, the research part of energy or, you know, like, how, how would that help? Yeah, I, I'll have to... Uh, We'll we'll have to get into this more, but I'm gonna end the I'm gonna end the stream and the talk about Bob Lazar unless anyone wants to uh, really entertain that further. Um, but no, but, I'd rather uh, talk about Bob Lazar. You know, uh, whatever they he thought that he knew. Um, or... Yeah, Tom DeLong nailed it with uh, when he was on Joe Rogan and said it was that material. So this is like that's a, definitely a place we need to you know look. If he was told this classified information, he let the cat out of the bag and then like retracted it because that was like their, uh, you know, their secret sauce. They didn't want to let it all out. If that's really what's going on with TTSA, as they claim, you know, that, oh, you know, they closed down the investment um, period. So it's, but they're claiming that they have alien technology. You know what I mean? And that they're going to reverse engineer it. So if we go on that, that bit that um, Tom DeLong said first on Joe Rogan, then we have to take him seriously. And if Gary Nolan's got a piece of this, that's a great place to start. Um, until, you know, at least until um, Jeremy Corbell and Bob Lazar can cough up some of that 115. You know what I mean? So... I'll be waiting for, you know, Cor Mr. Corbell and, and, and Lazar to cough up the 115 so we can run some tests on that and, and, and uh, bring disclosure through that. But uh, otherwise, you know, I got to uh, go to the next best thing I can find right now. is And that looks like uh, Gary Nolan and, and, and Jack Vallee and these materials that they have. None of the pictures that Jesse really showed up, though, look in like anything interesting. It's more like the nanostructure stuff that we're looking for. So, in any case, peace out. And, uh, you know, keep looking for those real Bob Lazars, the real uh, physicists that are involved in the deep scientific programs, because there's plenty of them out there.